Hey, bub. You a little scared? This is Kobe. If you're new to our channel, we've been fostering this guy for a little while. We got no tail wag. We got some scared puppy eyes and shaking. He'll be okay, right? You want to tell everyone what we're doing today? Kobe is seeing the eye doctor. Yeah, which is important because... He's blind. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I put you on the spot. But no, we are at an animal eye specialist. I mean, specifically. That's their job. They're one of the best around, and if anyone can give us a diagnosis on this boy, and whether he'll actually ever be able to see, it will be the animal eye specialist. Good morning, I care for animals in Pasadena. This is Jessica speaking. Good morning, Jessica. This is Rocky, and I am here for Kobe's appointment. Just for the record, it doesn't matter if Kobe can see or not. We still love him just as much. He he is just as important, right? Like yeah, pretty obvious, but I think important to say doesn't change the outcome of the love that he will receive. We're fostering him. We're going to work on his eyes, and he's got to have a heart surgery. Then he'll be available for adoption. But if we can help him get his eyesight back, even just a little bit, even just a little bit, or understand a little bit more of what is going on, it will just empower us, empower him, and I think we owe it to this guy at least. Oh my child, I know You hurt and you can't let go It's not your fault and you don't deserve All the bad in the hurt Oh, breaks my heart. I, had, I can't be in there with him right now because everything going on and he can't smell me because the latex glove. I was trying to let him smell my arm just to let him know it's okay. His little heart's beating so fast. Oh. Hi there, it's Dr. Hoffman. How's it going? Hi, Dr. Hoffman. How are you? Super, thank you. Just took a look at little Kobe. So, um, the front of the eye is normal. The back of the eye is not. Um, and in the back of the eye, you have the retina and the optic nerve. Okay. The optic nerve is the cable for vision. So the optic nerve connects the eyeball to the brain. Ah. And the optic nerves in both eyes are almost non-existent. That's called optic nerve hypoplasia. So the optic nerve didn't develop. And so whatever signals are going to the eye, it's not getting to the brain, so brain, the brain can't process vision. Okay. That's not something that I can fix. Um, so, you know, unfortunately, the, the blindness is, is permanent. Based off your assessment, can he see anything or pretty much he's 100% blind? He, yeah, he can. I used a, a very bright light and he's not responding to that. Okay. I know you've done your part, it's not fair. You did your time. What do you think? Well, he's not any worse off than before he went in. Yeah. So, that's okay. He can't see. Yeah, it doesn't... It doesn't change anything. Like I said before this, it doesn't... It doesn't change how much we love him. Yeah. It doesn't change how much you love him. I don't know, in my opinion, I think blind dogs should get more treats. Kobe, here you go, bud. You did good, you're a good boy, you did so good. Oh, well, he's yeah. too nervous. <laughs> he doesn't even want the treat. It's a lot, man. There's a lot on a on a pup that can't see. It's a lot on a, any dog going into the bed. Here. Kobe. Here, bub. You want a treat? Oh, what's that? What's that? No, that might be the first time he's not taking a treat. You think he's sad because he heard the vet talking? Maybe. I'll cheer him up. Like him. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to do something really special. Yeah. Sure. Ty, we yeah. have we have the diagnosis. Oh boy, what is that? So he's 100% blind, can't see light and dark or anything. Wow. So he has no sense. He's got a really good sniffer. Yeah, and big whiskers. Oh boy. Well, that sucks. It does kind of stink because it's like, 
you know it's a breeder problem. So the vet was alluding, definitely neurological, and, and typically with this sort of syndrome, they said they have um, heart issues and tremors, which is all the signs of what Kobe has. Uh, a little work needs to be put in on the breeder being investigated too. Yeah. You know, you can't keep breeding dogs and putting stuff out here like Kobe. Yeah. You know? Thank you, man. Okay, bye. Bye, bye. Okay, I'll be back in just a second. Why are we at Target? I, um, <laughs> I hurt my thumb. It's a long story. I'll just, uh, it happened at the ranch. Just, we'll cut to that right now. <laughs> I, smashed, I smashed my thumb. Look at this. Can you see that? Oh, man. Can't take the city boy to the country anywhere. <laughs> Ty, Ty ran over my thumb with the tractor. Just kidding. <laughs> I, I slammed it in a car door. What am I thinking? And I don't even have a good story. Shake it off. Oh. Back to work. All right, I'm pretty excited because right now we're out at Reverse Rescue and we are starting a new project today. Uh, something big. In fact, the biggest project I've ever done because we're building an entire neighborhood. Entire neighborhood of tiny homes. This is where the new neighborhood is going in, right up there. So it's up on the hill. The main ranch is just right here. The goal of it will be that there'll be dogs that can't necessarily be adopted. They're kind of here long term. And so what'll happen is they'll be able to live their life here uh, and people will be able to stay with them in that tiny home so that the dogs have a family. Hopefully one day, even people watching this like you, you can apply to come and be a part of Reverse Rescue and stay in one of the tiny homes with one of the senior dogs. All right, you wanna walk us through what we're doing today? Yes. So we're gonna take all these posts, four by four by eights, and then do two by fours that are gonna be behind the fencing. Pretty much we're just gonna implement where each different post is gonna be for each part of the fencing. So we're gonna do perimeter fencing. Why is that important? Keep all the stuff you don't want out, keep all the stuff you do want in. Yes. Oh, there are two dogs over there we're gonna check out. I wanna get the story. They just came in late last night at like 2 a.m. Okay, who are these pups? These are Hoagie and Jelly Bean. They were dropped off in a neighborhood together. Um, the security had seen them pushed out of a car. Yeah. And so one of my really good friends, Pamela, had actually brought them over to us at 2 a.m. Okay. Um, they're in bad shape. She's still got her wound on her side. So. He's free now. He is like a hoagie roll. So we named him hoagie. That's a good name. And jelly bean, what a good name. <laughs> she is a little jelly bean. If you can adopt two dogs at the same time, they're bonded, right? They love each other. So uh, it just helps. As you can see, he wants to get to her right away. What, uh, what happened here? So, even though we have dug holes there, 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 everywhere, we have hit a line somewhere. Oh, yeah, I feel it. So, it is deaf, and there's the electrical line right next to it. It's our last post. We did all of these, and then our last post. Uh, you have two phones? Business and personal. Girlfriends and work? <laughs> okay, so we're starting a new channel where we Ooh. just kind of lay it all out there. What's the content gonna be? Uh, well, you're looking at it. <laughs> when we put up the big video of the tiny home for homeless dogs, it'll be an awesome video. Impactful. Um, yeah, but you won't see everything. How it all comes together and everything that happened. There's so many rocks and gravel and it's really dry, tough dirt. You know, a lot of places like the Midwest, that would just peel back, but not here. <laughs> I haven't had Sunny D for a while. How is oh, it? Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> On actually January 1st of this year, um, we had lost our, our blind Maltese. We had him for a while, we got him at a healthy weight, and he, uh, he did very well. 
for a while and then his kidneys started failing and giving out. So we buried Jackson right here. And then just recently <coughs> we lost one of our seniors, uh, Freddie. Um, pretty much the whole premise of this area up here is it's gonna be a gazebo that looks over the ranch. Um, mainly I decided this because Jackson was blind, so it's like he can see up here and watch over everybody. That's well, what, it's even, even foundation, as long as we just cut, it's just simple cuts and then screwing it together. Yeah. So all the gravel, couple drops on there, yeah. and we're good on that. Yeah. Because then by the time the material gets here for Thursday, then we can actually build the walls because we'll have the material for it. Start ordering stuff. Cool. Well, what are you standing around for? Let's get it. Let's get to work. <laughs> okay, I'll get off the tractor now before I break something. <laughs> Giving them any fresh water or food or anything. How long have you been giving them food and water for, not the owner? I've been doing this for probably about four months. Worth. Four months. If there's not food, if there's not water there, then we can come document it and then we can go from there and actually take care of it and say, listen, if you want to keep your dogs, we are going to come back for mandatory checkups. You have to take care of them and show that you're doing substantial stuff for shelter, food, water. And then if it's not, then it can be turned into saying, you know, this is animal neglect, this is animal cruelty, this isn't how, you know, animals are to be treated and that's a felony. Well, yeah, we're gonna be up here doing tractor work all day, so just let me know as the day progresses. Bye-bye. Oh, that's gonna be a drawn out situation. Thing is, is the three wellness things for even animal control or police to get involved is shelter, food, and water. Right. Every dog has to have that. Quick update about Jelly Bean and Hoagie tied. You gotta tell them the good news. Well, here's the thing. It happens in rescue a lot. Is the owners came forward. They actually hit up their HOA. They followed traffic cameras throughout three different neighborhoods. So they contacted us. They showed us all the documentation. They are actually UKC dogs. Um, they had them since little tiny puppies. So, Thank when goodness. they contacted us, it's always good because rescue is not only about just rescue of animals, it's about advocacy for families and keeping animals with their families. That's awesome. So, we got them back to them. I went met the family, went through the house. They actually are a very good family. They yes. are. They yes. live very, very good. The dogs live better than most us humans do. Nice. How do you think things are going so far? So, I think it's good because we're getting the build going. What? Thank you for the dog there's a snake in the dog kennels. All right, if you wanna see what happens with the snake, you gotta go subscribe to my new channel, Kanaka Life. Hey, I'd love to have you there from the very beginning, so go now, subscribe, and go check out this video. Go watch it.